Hello everybody, I'm George from Ireland. So this is a video about um, the Haredim of the United Kingdom. So they are almost exclusively concentrated in London. I'm in an area called Stamford Hill. You can see that mobile home behind me. It says the Lubavitch on wheels. Um, so that's a sect of ultra-Orthodox uh, Judaism. And this is mitzvah, um, as in it's a ritual bath for women after menstruation. As Lubavitch house, you can see it's got it up in um, Hebrew as well as English. So uh, Stamford Hill, uh, for some reason, is where the um, Haredim um, concentrate. Uh, and anyway, there are lots of schools and synagogues here. Some is very informally run, and they were always registered. Some members of the community got into trouble last year with the police because they held a wedding in deepest lockdown in contravention of the coronavirus regulations. So you'll recognize Haredim or ultra-Orthodox Jews, you can call them either, because um, they don't wear ordinary clothes the rest of the secular world would wear. Um, certainly the men tend to wear dark suits. Um, this, this sect emerged in 17th century Poland. Poland, of course, being at, um, at its zenith back then, much larger than it is today, including what's now Lithuania, Belarus and Ukraine. Um, uh, so wear dark suits that wearing a skull cap of course the kippa or yamuka and cutting their hair very short under it but having very long tassels at the side these side locks because the bible says that um, you shall not round the corners of your of your head um so these, these people have been in the united kingdom for four generations and look here's a newspaper uh, but it is in english called the jewish weekly because some of them um would still speak very accented English because the wind is meaning I can't show it to you. Um, there we have the Jewish Weekly because um, they uh, don't interact with the secular world very much, trying to keep mainstream society at arm's length because they could be corrupted by our sinful influences, led away from the faith, and they only obviously want to think about the faith. Now you see that woman there, that's very obviously a wig to me because married women don't share, show their locks outside of um, a familial context would always wear a wig or some sort of um, uh, head covering, very modest dress. Okay, it's only a, a knee length skirt or a knee length dress, but then always tights no matter how hot it is, not to be showing the flesh of their legs, long sleeves again, no matter what the temperature, not to be showing too much skin. So emphasizing fidelity and modesty. And then her husband's not to touch her during menstruation. I don't mean just refraining from copulation, but no physical contact uh, whatsoever. So um, what else? Uh, and then wearing those uh, little aprons with the tassels as well. Um, so uh, that's it, kind of kind of modest dress most of the time is most important. There's an example. Uh, these men, you can't really see them, they're largely obscured behind the car. For some reason, so, so many Haredim seem to wear glasses. I thought, why do they have a poor, poor eyesight? Because obviously they, they originated in Israel, you know, almost two millennia ago. Then they were mostly in Eastern Europe. And then obviously they were almost annihilated in the Second World War because they're so easily identifiable from their clothing. They had the least chance of blending into Gentile society uh, and evading uh, the Holocaust. So that, that lack of concealment meant they were almost wiped out. But obviously the Haredim communities who were el further east in the Soviet Union who survived, who were in the United Kingdom, the United States and so on, and a few of them in Israel even before the foundation of the State of Israel, um, but they tend to marry as young as they can, have lots of children, um, and so uh, their, their community is growing quite rapidly for that reason. Um, but uh, the men are often uh, biblical scholars. Wait till this goes by. Studying the Talmud and Torah several hours a day. And so if they have any time to work, often doing minimum wage jobs, often rejecting secular education. Women are sometimes the breadwinners. And that, well, that house there is not in very good nick, but it had that um, mezuzah, you know, the, the scrolls of the law, which on the doorpost and every adult will touch it as he or she um, enters each time. They even have it on individual, the doors to individual rooms sometimes. I've seen it there at 124. Maybe you can't see it. On the right hand doorpost, we, we, we look at it because it's too far away. So this is Stamford Hill. But even in Stamford Hill, that they are a minority. And there might be certain streets of the majority, certain buildings, some blocks of flats are perhaps are the majority. And then there are shops which cater to their particular needs, you know, kosher shops because they're quite strict about eating that. Occasionally you see, I see people from this community in central London, Oxford Street and so on. And um, the women don't stand out as much as the men. I mean, they do wear 
more um, normal clothes, however very modest version thereof. This woman crossing the street would be an example. She's perhaps too far away, you can't really zoom in on her. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's a wig. I'm guessing the two little girls are her daughters. So a married woman, obviously cohabitation is unacceptable homosexuality. Likewise, divorces is permitted, but it's unusual. And so they could certainly drink wine, that's uh, allowed in the Bible. I um, don't think they're necessarily against cigarettes. They're very against drugs. There's something that's called Hasidic Jews, or Hasidim would be, would be the um, plural. Um, now, there are all sorts of shades of observance in the Judaism from them, the ultra-Orthodox, who are trying to live like they're in ancient Israel and so far as possible, right up to people you wouldn't know for Adam who are completely integrated, who are um, Jewish really in name only, who know nothing about the faith, never been to a synagogue, don't even attempt to stick to any of the rules. And such people, often they're only half or a quarter Jewish, might be on the father's side, because you might know traditionally that um, Judaism is meant to be matrilineal on the ground that uh, well, until DNA tests came around, a man couldn't be certain if a child was really his or not. Whereas um, a woman, if she gives birth, she tends to know about it. Um, so, and these two gentlemen here would be more members of the community there at the bus stop. So, uh, wh what else can I say? And some of them were involved in politics. So, I mean, I say they often gave the secular world a wide berth, but that's not always the case. A couple of them were conservative councillors, for example. I haven't heard of any who are Labour councillors, but I could be wrong. So this is where the ultra-Orthodox Jews tend to live. The Orthodox Jews, um, more in Finchley or indeed Golders Green, and then more secular Reform Jews could be anywhere, but Radlett in Hertfordshire um, is a centre of anglo Jewry. Jewelry. That's just, just north of London, uh, is Radlett. And then just south of Manchester, there's a place where there are quite a few Jewish people. Of course, the Jewish community in the United Kingdom is small. Um, 350,000 would be about the highest estimate. Um, and. Um, like 95% um, of that's in England, there's scarcely um, any in Northern Ireland, not even 100. Likewise, Wales is pretty small. In Scotland, uh, there in Glasgow, there's one synagogue in Edinburgh. For some reason, Glasgow much bigger than Edinburgh. I mean, I know Glasgow's thrice the population of Edinburgh, but the Jewish community of Glasgow is about 10 times that of Edinburgh. Then they've sort of got critical mass. Like moving outside the UK, like to Dublin, the, the, the kosher butcher closed way back in I think, the 90s, and they say that's often like a litmus test for is this community viable, but then because of the economic boom in the Republic of Ireland, often American business, business executives came over, some of whom were Jewish, and that was a fillip to the, to the Jewish community. So um, yeah, the British Jewish community um, reached its zenith just after the Second World War, but uh, then um, obviously there were many that made Aliyah to Israel, so it fell and fell. Oh, I'm looking over there saying Montefiore Court, after um, presumably um, Moses Montefiore, that uh, uh, Jew Jewish chap who was a very wealthy businessman and his benefactions did so much for the community. Um, all right, that's enough from me. So I hope that was educative. So kindly follow my, my channel. Donate to me on PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. Toodaloo.